Hello and welcome back. I've moved over to this side of the studio because it's time for me to kick off today's Try Your Hand Up project. So sit back and enjoy as I take you through several simple steps to help you paint a lovely summer cottage. This is actually Beatrix Potter's house in the Lake District. So a very cosy cottage, lots of flowers and things around. I've sketched the scene in, very simply just using a standard 2B pencil. And I'm going to use a large brush and I'm just going to wet the paper to start with. And then as it dries, I'll add background colours, maybe even get a few bits of green in as well. But we'll start off just by dampening the paper. And we're going to do a bit of a vignette effect, which basically means not painting to the edges, leaving a soft border, if you like. I'm going to wet the whole sheet of paper. Because the pencil was quite soft, it may wash off some of the pencil. So it's always good to put sometimes a bit extra effort into the drawing so you can see exactly what's going off. A lot of people ask me about the pencil lines in a watercolour, but for me it's part of it. It does help the sharpness sometimes of a scene, so just leave it there basically. So that's all nicely covered, and that's quite wet there. So I'm just looking down the side to see all the shiny paper. If it's shiny, it's wet. I'll start off by using a very, very diluted natural yellow, which is a pre-mixed sandy colour. And I'm just going to work this in, lots and lots of water. I've not got a completely soaking brush though, so, but I'm going to put it flat to the paper and just twist, almost like you're painting clouds, I guess. Let it all run like this. It, bleeding paint is a very useful little phrase, but it's also very important for watercolours. Forget the windows are even there, go over them a little bit, and just work it through over the doorway. And also as we come down to this bottom area. I want to change the brush stroke direction, more of a horizontal, that'll give me the impression of that being a flat piece of ground or something like that. Okay, I want to dive straight in and get some natural grey. Again, it's a pre-mixed shadow grey. It's not Payne's grey, don't get the twos mixed up. It's very different to Payne's grey. A little bit of paint on the brush. I'm just going to darken this because it's actually, a, it's not a stone building as such, it's more like a rendered cottage, this one. So it's a grey, browny, warm colour. And you can see I'm mixing the paint on the paper, which is quite a nice thing to do. And I'm just getting it all working its way into it. Nice and twisted. And then at the bottom, just going to sweep it across from side to side. I'm holding the brush quite loosely at that point. So that's plenty for the background. Now I'll get some green in there. And I'll start off by using the large train texture brush for this. I'm going to clean it through, wipe the excess water. That's the best bit of advice I can give you the tree brush. Take the excess water out of it first. And then mix yourself quite a nice chunk of green. And I'm going to use some aureolin for this. So if you look at this, you can see it's nice and thick on the end there. Nice thick blob of aureolin there. I'm going to mix it in. And I want to drop in some natural blue. You could use an ultramarine blue for this if you wanted to. And that'll give me what I call an average green. Bit of a practice sometimes, it's good to have a scrap piece of paper just to one side so you can just practice the brush. But the idea is that you stipple it and it goes all spiky. If it starts off with too much colour, just get rid of the excess colour first before you move on to the painting. And of course it's nice and damp, so I'm just going to gently tap this in. And you can see it's giving me almost individual leaves. Now these could be roses or something or some some kind of foliage that's growing around the area and ideally you'd do this while it's uh, damp overlapping the windows a little bit gentle taps for the edges so you get that open leaf effect and work it down quite nice work it in and just think about the shape keep walking back look at the shape of it so that's plenty for that side it's just the right time to do this i want to jump over to this side and do a similar thing up there as well Nice individual leaves. You can even play around with the angle of the brush as you do this. And just gently tap in, let it spread, let it bleed. And you can see the colour is it's a nice warm, it's a nice warm green at this point. So just working it through. Trying, if possible, not to go over the doorway on that side, on the left hand side. The right side's fine because that's where we're looking into the picture from. But on the uh, left hand side, try and avoid that if you can. In fact, I'm going to use that piece of card as a straight edge and the paper's almost dry and do a few things. First of all, put it right on this little wall that I've sketched in 
there's a straight edge. And then tap, see that's almost dry at that point. Tap the tree brush there, and of course it gives me a straight edge. Now I want to try and multitask if I can. Move over to the small tree brush and get some natural grey. Natural grey, slightly thicker than the one we use for the background. Again, scrap piece of card, work it into the brush. Just very gently add a little bit of shadow to that. Especially where it goes into that little walled area. There we go. Now that brush has got a bit of grey, so that's good for doing the shadow, so we can leave that brush to one side. I'll come back to this larger one, which has got the um, green on. It's nice to have a couple of brushes in the sets because it lets you go back and forward, and it's, it's a nice way of working. Um, again, I'll put this on the edge at the side of the actual cottage door. It's still got the green on, hopefully. There it is. And we can stipple in, giving me the straight edge. Put that brush away, go for the one with the grey on, and drop the darkness just down at the side there. And the darkness will take it behind the area. And hopefully you can see it's left me a nice, crisp, clean, edged area. I'm just going to do one more little bit like that. And that's the piece just where this foliage comes at the back of the cottage doorway roof there. So I'm just going to lay it down and I'll just give it a bit of a tap there. I don't want that to be as dark, so what I'm, what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to use that brush as it is and pick up some of the grey and then mix it in another area. So I'm picking the grey that I used previously but working it into the brush and then adding the shadows to it. That little bit of darkness will just be enough to make it blend in to the picture. Don't make it too dark. So you can see. Now, I'll do the same across the top of the roof. Can you see where it's gone straight up there? So I'm going to put that there. And I just want it to slightly go behind the roof as it sticks out. So I'm just going to add a little bit there as well. Take that away so you can see how it's kind of growing behind, almost. So that's almost enough of that. Um, just going to do one final thing with the tree brush at this stage. That is to clean it, give it a bit of a squeeze so it's kind of dry. And then I'm just going to work in some of that grey so it doesn't look too obvious. It's a nice thing to do in watercolours, blend in the paint. People think blending is more of an oil painting trick, but really it can be used for watercolours just as well. There we go. So we can see how the foliage is surrounding the doorway. It's working quite nice. And the shadows really take it inside. If you've got good fingernails like me, you can have a bit of a scratch at this and you can drop in one or two little bits of branches and stems for maybe these are roses. So we're just going to add a bit of a scratchy effect there, just growing up as they hang over. There we go. I will come back and put some flowers there very shortly. But what I'll do before that is use a size 6 round brush, nice and clean. Now, I don't want a thick grey, it must be a medium kind of consistency. I'm going to go in and I'm just going to work that down like a bit of an L shape there. So that's down the left of the windows, down there as well, and across the top of the windows. And when I soften those in, it will make it look as though it goes in. So a clean brush, dab it on tissue so it's not completely soaking, and then just do a bit of a diagonal brush stroke, and that will just fade away the shadow, making the window, even at this early stage, look as though it goes back against the area. Right at the bottom, I'm going to use natural grey, but I'm going to squeeze a little bit of viridian into this because if you know the Lake District, you'll know it's a lot of slate in the buildings. And a good slate colour is natural grey with a little bit of viridian hue, which is a greeny colour. But don't overdo it. A little bit goes an awful long way. I'm going to work around the inside of the doorway and then work it out to something like this. Clean brush, bang the excess off, and just use the water to give it a bit of a scribble. So that's starting to give me a bit of a path or an opening. It would be nice to be a, f a fraction, just a little bit darker as it goes inside. So just put a little bit of natural grey in there by itself. 
just the tiniest amount of paint on that brush. And if I pull it out, you can see it's almost giving me a, a shadow. So it takes you into that area there. Just put a bit more sweep over there. And then really a good stage to leave this picture at would be to use the slate gray color again and paint in the actual porch itself. It's a slate building. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of color Obviously being careful not to go over too much of the green. So just kind of spotting my way around a little bit around the green. Coming down this side as well, because that's all slate under there. I'll put shadows on this before we finish. Come down the edge. So this is the green, greeny gray. And then we'll get some over this side coming down this definite clean piece of slate coming down the edge there and then in a second or two I'll blend all that in so it looks more natural I'm also going to drop it across the little wall that goes in front of those green areas so that's ready for me to blend so I'll clean my brush bang the excess off few times and then just use the water what's on your brush and just basically pull it out it's almost like using a pencil it's scribbling it's blending away and you're making it just all become part of the background let's give it another clean as your brush runs out of energy just add a bit more water to it there we go again look back at the picture look for the make sure the blending's all smooth a damp brush is all you need for that. And that's probably a good stage to say we'll leave it, we'll let it dry and we'll come back to it very shortly. Right, while we leave that to dry, we've just got time to throw our creative spotlight on another up and coming SAA professional artist. Today is the turn of versatile artist and tutor, Murray Inns. Let's take a closer look at him in action as he demonstrates how to use water mixable oils to paint middle distant trees. So today I'm going to paint some middle distant trees using my favourite medium, artisan water mixable oils. And uh, to start off with, I'm going to make up a shadow colour, which is very dark. And I'm using cobalt blue, it's Payne's grey, cadmium yellow, and to make it slightly earthy, I'm going to use a little raw umber. Right, so we've got the mix ready. Now, I'm going to start. And the technique really is about brush handling rather than painting. When you talk to people about painting, you tend to sort of think about strokes. Well, with oil painting particularly, uh, a lot of the technique is just pushing the brush. It's not actually building strokes, so I'm just going to go a little bit further along, keeping a broken edge. The shadows in trees mainly are, are caused by the branches, so the lower part of the trees are usually in a little more shadow. So there's the, the sort of shadow colour. I'm going to introduce now to the mix without making a new mix, but I'm going to take some more cadmium yellow and put it into the side of the mix. Quite a nice green, that. So, what we do now is go in with the second stage, which is to not put in the This isn't the highlight stage. This is just building up a little extra colour, a, a different colour. So, again, I'm pushing the brush slightly out that way to give a broken top, using the texture of the canvas to help create the effect, the illusion of lots of branches and leaves. So picking the paint up and I'm pushing the paint into the brush and just rolling it slightly as I do so, just to get some paint around the tip and on the s just around the side a bit so that you can dab it on. Just touching it softly on the top there to get that broken effect. Right, I'm going to put that brush down now and switch to a smaller one. And here I'm going for a third colour, which again 
if I work into the side of that colour, I've still got the three colours that I start, you know, the, the first shadow colour, the second uh, colour. This is the first sort of highlighting colour where now you have to think about light direction. I'm just going to put a little bit of medium, thinning medium into that. So it's slightly runnier, very slightly. And now I'm just going to pick it up, pushing a brush in to make sure I've got paint on the tips of the bristles. And now we have to be a bit selective. So if I say the light's coming from top left, the light's coming in that way, then you think about the branches that are catching the light or the parts of the trees that are catching the light. So it'll be the high parts and the ends of the branches that are out towards the light. When you look at a group of trees in the distance, you can see rhythms in the foliage, especially if it's a group of the same species of trees, like oak trees that grow in, in the oak woods. When you look at them from a distance, you see these lovely patterns. And that's what you're trying to, to get into the painting. Again, at the top, just because it's a lighter colour that I'm working with, I'm putting some that's catching the light just up on the top parts there. If you find you're pushing the brush in to get paint off, it means you haven't got enough paint on the brush. Then you get blobs rather than delicate little leaves. So just make sure you've got plenty of paint on the brush so that when you just touch it to the canvas, you're just putting a tiny little bit of paint on. And then finally, we mix the third highlight colour, which again, I'm going to use uh, the remaining of cadmium yellow. This time I'm going to introduce a little bit of yellow ochre um, because when you look at oak trees, the leaves, especially late in the summer, have a sort of earthy look to the green. It's an earthy green. They're not bright greens, vivid greens. So the highlight colour that I'm going to use is that earthy greeny colour. Now, the loading of the brush this time is going to be slightly different. What I'm going to do is stab the brush into the paint that way, which pushes paint up between the bristles and splays the bristles out. You don't use your cherished brushes for this. You use a, a sort of a, a, an old worn one. And then just gently touch the bristles into the wet paint and you'll get paint on the very tips of the bristles. And then the next stage is to just highlight where the light really catches the... Now you're thinking in terms of bunches of leaves rather than branches. And so again, make sure there's plenty of paint on there. If you, again, if the paint doesn't come off, make sure that it's wet enough to just touch off of the brush at this stage. You can get a bit too much on there. Just roll the brush, get rid of the excess paint and do it again. And then we're going for these little highlights. Don't want to do it all over the trees, especially not down the bottom too much because it depends on the light direction. If the light's coming over your shoulder, then some of the lower branches will catch the light. But otherwise, keep the highlights to the top two thirds of your trees and try and leave those little shadow gaps. Just got a little bit of highlighting to put in here, which would just finish that off. There we are, my method of painting middle distant trees. And here, in a finished painting, you can see the technique used to, to effect in the, in the distant trees there. Brilliant brush sanding skills there, Maury. Great to see how pushing paint can create such simple and stunning effects. Well, folks, time for a quick break now, but join us in part three, when I'll be showing you how to add the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Out watercolour project. I'll see you after the break. <laughs>